This is a very nice color for my saddles, okay? See the progression of the color. Dark color for the saddles, middle tone for my first layers, my first light, I'm and my last light. I will apply a second layer of this color of the base in order to achieve a perfect coverage of this layer, okay? And remember, painting light colors like yellow is, is okay if you apply more white on the surface when you are priming the miniature, okay? So, the yellow is a color which has no power coverage. I'll demonstrate you in this side, which is way dark, and see how the paint is hardly covering the, the surface. I need to apply maybe two, three, four layers. And now I'll start to paint the lights and saddles, okay? This is the, let's say, the, the cloak, which have some wrinkles and this is probably where you have some problems. So the trick for that is to see the, the cloak in this direction, okay? So uh, if you look in, in this way to the miniature, you could see something like that. It's something like a rooftop, okay? Uh, and now uh, I like to, to place my light and my saddles. The, the light comes from here, from above the, the miniature, okay? So, I need to place the light in the more exposed areas to the light, which are these crests of the shape of the, of the cloak, okay? These are, those are the, the places where the light will incite with more strong, okay? So I'll place some light here, here, and here, for example. But I have here the same orientation for this, those pl planes of, of the wrinkles, okay? So I need to place some light here, inside, in the, in the, in the areas inside the wrinkles, okay? So this is how I could emphasize the volumes of the, of the cloak, okay? So this is the only thing that you need to keep in mind when painting a straight cloaks like this. Of course, if this is light, okay, this will be shadow or middleton, okay? But the spaces between the lights will be middleton or shadows, okay? So for the light, I will pick a little bit of my light color, okay? And I'll start to paint in the wrinkles, like this. This is the upper part of the wrinkle, okay? Don't worry about smooth rim, the gradient. Okay, so I paint some light in the more exposed areas of the wrinkles, okay? Now it's turn for the deepest recesses of the light. Here, between the lights. Here is when you need a very sharp brass. I love to use this brass, for me, is, is the right tool for almost all the work on the miniature. Is a Maestro Series uh, 10, number 2, from Da Vinci. Again, the dilution is not too high in, the, in those two steps. For making these kind of, of sketches, I need a good coverage of the, mini, uh, of the paint, sorry, in order to cover 
the, the surface with one or two layers, okay? Sometimes it's better to apply two layers than only one, which have no room for mistakes, okay? Now I'll apply a second light with this lighter color, okay? And now you could see I'm starting to achieve some contrast in, in the miniature. Keep in mind to paint inside the area previously painted, but don't go out, outside. With this light, of course, I paint inside the wrinkles in order to highlight the volumes co previously commented. Now I'm starting to apply the shadow color, okay? Of course, they will, this will create the definitive contrast and Remember, the shadow color will be applied between the lights. Yeah. Okay. So, I continue with applying the shadows on the clock, okay? Taking account the, the things commented before about the recesses painted with light as well okay and these parts are the ones with the shadow okay so here it is of course I could apply now more light or more shadow in some spot that I like probably I I'll make light a little bit lighter okay so I will pick some yellow some white again and as I said before these little touches of light are inside the previous ones so he's trying to make some kind of cell shading in the miniature and don't forget to define the lower edge in order to gain some definition. Kisaus001 uh, asked before uh, in, the, in the Instagram post, uh, he was asking about if I use the eyebrows at, at the very end of the process to smooth, to smooth the, the, the wall miniature, the, 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 the gradients, okay? And Enrique Botello 92 uh, is asking about the dilution for uh, smoothing the, the gradients. Okay, so I'll try to explain these two two questions uh, right now. Okay, and the dilution uh, which I have been using for uh, sketching is different from the one that I use uh, for smoothing the gradients. I want to to create a dilution for glazes. Okay, glazes are so important when it's to paint with acrylic paint because uh, it's not like oil. Oil is easily uh, smoother and the, the, um, the acrylic paint is different in this way because it dries so fast, okay? So I first of all apply this kind of sketch and now with the, the mix more diluted uh, I'll start to apply gla glazes over this sketch, okay? So for that I will Make you could make the, the smooth ring with eyebrows or with with brass, okay? Is is pretty the same because with the dilution is more or less the same, and and the only difference is that with brass you could spend more time, but you will be way more precise than with the with the eyebrows, okay? So uh, I'll pick my my color. For, for example, for the lights, because I want to smooth the lights a little bit. And I'll start to add water. Here you have some letters, okay? So this is perfect for check the dilution because we want a transparent paint. So I'll pick a little bit of the diluted paint and simply put your brass onto the, the paper, the paper uh, to remove the sets of water in the in the in the brass, okay. This is important be because I don't want 
uh, a lot of water uh, in the surface of the miniature, okay? And you could check the dilution painting over the, the letters, okay? And if you could read the letters, is the dilution is okay. I want to smooth a little bit the light. If you, if you feel that the brass stroke if it is still uh, rough, okay, you could add a little bit of water to your mix. You could make a little bit of a stippling with the tip of the brass in order to accumulate the glaze in some spots. This is why I told you before that this method is very precise because you want to blur almost everything with the brass in this way. So uh, to apply some eye brushing here I will uh, use the eye brush of course some diolent okay I like to, to use a little bit of diolent uh, because the, the paint won't strip so easily the, the eye brush okay of course some drops of water and for example I, I will create uh, in the eyebrows a um, middle tone okay so I will uh, I'm using a little bit of yellow ochre okay is something like the color base used before for my very first layer okay and I will be adding to darken the color some some orange okay I remove this color inside very well and a little bit of purple as I did before is is the, the same mix of course I could use and let's try it transparent layers okay I don't want to cover the letters with the eyebrows so you could see that I'm able to read the letters with this mix so dilute the paint inside the brass and now I'm I will be painting mainly in the middle tones and shadow area. So for that I will turn down the miniature in this side, for example, and I will start to apply some glazes with the eyebrows. A couple of touches and remember, avoid the light area. I know that this color always is for you a uh, downhill to paint because yellows, uh, reds, and some kind, this kind of colors are very, very problematic. But I trust that with these advices that I give you, uh, your doubts will be resolved in no time. So uh, play, please let us know your your progression with uh, these colors and these techniques that we love to share with you and uh, we hope that you you enjoyed the video and the explanation so see you in, in the next one